And we're talking about how to hear God's voice. How to hear God's voice. So the first thing you have to realize is that God speaks. God exists. He speaks. And uh, he wants to talk to you. He wants to impart uh, his plan in your life. And he speaks. So how do you hear God's voice then? So we're going to talk about how God talks to you. How God talks to you. So how do you know if God's talking to you? Um, is this God or was it that different weird pizza you ate last night? I mean, what is it that you're hearing? You know, there was a guy, he went ice fishing. He drills the hole and then a booming voice says, there is no fish here. It must be God. So, okay. So he moves further down, drills another hole, and again, the same voice. There is no fish here. He thinks, wow, God is really speaking to me. He really cares that I find the right place to catch some fish. And uh, he moves down and begins to drill another hole, and the voice says, this is the ice rink attendant. There is no fish here. <laughs> so is it God speaking to you? Or is it your own thoughts or someone else's opinion, someone else's voice? Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 says, The whole Bible was given to us by inspiration from God. And is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It straightens us out and helps us to do what is right. It is God's way of making us well prepared at every point, fully equipped to do good to everyone. The whole Bible is God breathed, it's inspiration. It's God speaking to us, and it's useful to us, and it teaches us what is true. So God speaks to you through truth. He speaks to us through the Bible. Aren't you glad? Because without it, we wouldn't know that we're doing things wrong, that we're not in the place to receive blessing, and I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where I just needed to be straightened out. The word of God will straighten us out and helps us do what is right. So it empowers us, gives us the ability to do that which is right and what God wants in our lives. And don't you want to be prepared? Prepared for what? He prepares us for, to be able to and to be equipped to do good to everyone. You might be thinking, well, I just don't know how to do good in this situation. Well, then you need to be prepared. And he will prepare us through the truth of his word. So God speaks to you through the truth. God speaks you to you through the Bible. This is God's word. It says it's written down by those he inspired. And it also says that it's... In another translation, the NIV and a different one says it is God breathed. Remember when God breathed into man the breath of life? And they became a living soul. Do you remember the Bible says that Jesus is the word? Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Speaking about Jesus, Jesus and the Word, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Word. <laughs> it's God breathed. It's God's life. The Bible says that, that my Word is life. And so if we want some life, sometimes you say, well, you know, I'm just not feeling very lively. I'm not just feeling energized. Well, let's get some of the Word into us. Let's get some of that truth into us because it's God breathing into us. It's God's life breath. What did God do in the beginning? He spoke 
and it became. He spoke creation into existence. He spoke it all. And he's breathing that same breath. Remember when Jesus showed up to the disciples after he'd risen from the dead? Said he breathed on them. He is the word. And God's breath, God's life, God's word is breathing into us. But today in the society we live in, we see that the Bible sometimes is thought to be archaic, not relevant, and disagreeable. Well, of course, it's disagreeable because it straightens us out, <laughs> shows us what we're doing wrong so that we will live the right way. And it's not, not just to, to limit us, but to free us, to receive the blessings of God. It's not, don't do this just because I said so. <laughs> no, it's don't do this so that you will be free from the consequences uh, that dis disagreement with God's word brings. So the Bible wasn't written so that you know, it would be just a popular book, but it's God's truth. It's eternal. So stand on the word of God. So how do we stand on the word of God? Well, as I said, we've got to keep putting the word into us. I'm sorry, this is bothering me. All right. Pause. <laughs> Begin. <laughs> so stand on the word of God. So what do you do before you go to work, before you go to school? Let's put some God-breathed life into us. Let's have something to stand on for the day. Maybe you need to read a chapter of Proverbs or a gospel a chapter in the, in the gospels of Jesus. Um, it says here in the book of Psalm, Psalm 119, verse 67, says, I used to wander off until you punished me. Now I closely follow all you say. Verse 71 says, the punishment you gave me was the best thing that could have happened to me. For it taught me to pay attention to your laws. They are more valuable to me than millions in silver and gold. So that's a strange thing maybe to our thought process no one likes to be punished. No one likes to be corrected. No one likes these things. But he's saying this is more value to, valuable to me than millions in silver and gold. It was the best thing that could have happened to me. When God speaks to us, when his word speaks to us, when his truth comes to us and straightens us out. Causes us to go the way that he wants for us. That he intends for us. That is best for us. That is good for us. It's the best thing that could happen to us. You know, some people, they don't want to come to church. They don't want to read the word because they, they know that they might have to change. <laughs> that they might have to be corrected. Yes, we may have to be corrected. But... It's more valuable than anything else. And it causes us now to pay attention to the word of God. To pay attention. He learned that it's much better just to be attentive. To hear the voice of God. To hear his word. And so God got David's attention. You know, I, I grew up thinking, you know, I grew up in a Christian home. Very grateful for that. My grandparents, all believers, Christians, we grew up going to church. And uh, we went to church on Sunday morning. We went to church on Wednesday night. We went to church on Sunday night. And uh, so we were re religiously involved in going to church. And that's a good thing. And, uh, but 
you know, I used to think that my parents were really strict. You know, I used to think that they were all fuddy duddies that wouldn't let me have any fun. Right? Because what would I compare it to? I'd compare it to other families and their parents let their kids do everything. At least in my mind. They got to go to this and they got to do that. They got to be involved with that. And my parents would say no. And my parents would say, well, we, we, we got to go to church. and We're going to church or, or whatever the case might be. When they would say no, I would think, wow, this is a bummer. This is something that, you know, this is not cool at all. My parents are not cool like their parents are. But actually later as life goes on, I found out that my parents were the coolest. My parents were the best. My parents were the most loving because they would correct me and steer me in the right direction. And that that led me to blessings. Whereas you see the result of those kids that got to do everything, and anything without restraint. It led what? It led to destruction and damage and pain in their lives. Therefore, a loving heavenly father corrects his kids. That's what love does. We want our kids to grow up to be the best. We want them to have more than we've ever imagined. We want them to be successful. We want them to know God and to know all his blessings and goodness. Well, that means we're going to have to steer them. It means you're going to have to put some guardrails. That means you're going to have to, to correct them. That means you're going to have to, as, as it said here, it says he had to punish them. But I want you to know that the rules or the word of God, the regulations, the punishment or the consequences is built in. It's not like, okay, you make a mistake and God goes, all right, I got to punish them now. No, it's already in the disobedience itself causes the consequences. God doesn't do really anything. It's already happens. When we go the wrong way, I mean, it's true of driving your car. If you go the wrong way and say, well, I don't care if there's a lake here, I'm, I'm driving. You're going to result in the consequences. Nobody came by and says, well, it's because you did that. We're putting your car and you in the, in the lake. It's just going to happen. And so disobedience to God's word. Aren't you glad that God will stop us, that God will correct us, that God will help us, that God will give us a GPS that we can count on, that we can go to the right direction. So, so what do we do? Instead of allowing ourselves to go the wrong way, we hear the voice of God. We listen to the truth in his word. And when we see it in his word, we go, wow, I'm, I got to get straightened out. I, I got to go the right direction. What do we do? We repent. We turn around and we go the right direction. And we begin to obey God. And when we do that, the blessings are available. And it's just there. It's in the word. Right? What does it say? If you plant a seed, you're going to reap. A harvest. So what kind of seeds, what kind of planting are you doing in your heart, in your life? And out of it will come forth the right words, the right actions, the right behavior, and the right results when we obey God. See, if you grew up not obeying your parents, now, I mean, you know, we've, we've all disobeyed our parents at one time or another. I, I mean, unless you're Jesus... But you're not. So, but we're in Christ. So, um, but if you never, if, you, if it's like you never obey your parents, then when you grow up, guess what? You're not going to obey your teacher at school. You're not going to obey your boss when you get to your job. And if you don't listen to them, if you don't submit to them, if you don't humble yourself to them, even if you don't 
because you don't feel like it, because you don't want to, because you're going to do it your way. Well, eventually you'll have to listen. And you'll have to listen to the police or the jail warden or someone because you never listened and obeyed. So if we will obey the Lord, if we will obey those that God puts in our lives, humble ourselves, yield, surrender our way to the way that is right and allow ourselves to be straightened out. <laughs> Straighten out and fly right. Otherwise, somewhere along the way, you're going to have to humble yourself in a situation you did not want to. So let's do it now. Let's allow the truth of the word of God be the voice of God to us in every area of our lives. So that's number one, God's word. Number two, God speaks to you through trouble. Well, that can't be right. How can it be that God speaks to you through trouble? Well, C.S. Lewis said this. He said, pain is God's megaphone. We see it throughout the Old Testament. We see it throughout the scriptures. The Israelites, when everything was good, you know, they just started to kind of drift off into whatever they wanted to do, began to worship false gods, began to, to forget about God's word and his laws, and then disaster would come, destruction would come, and then what did they do? Then they would begin to pray. Then they would begin to cry out. Then they would begin to say, maybe it would have been good if we would have listened to God. And if we would have trusted his word. So what happens? Through trouble, it causes us to lean upon God. It causes us to allow our ear to be turned to him. So usually we listen more urgently when we're in trouble. But it's better than not listening to him. It's better than not calling on him. So if you're in trouble, yes, call upon him. Yes, ask him for help. He is good. His mercy endures forever. He forgives. He heals. He restores. He helps. Even in times of trouble. There was a woman. She had just returned to her home from an evening of church services. When she was startled by an intruder. She caught the man in the act of robbing her home. And she yelled, stop, Acts 2.38. And that, that scripture says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for, for the forgiveness of your sins. So she yelled, Acts 2.38. The burglar stopped in his tracks. The woman calmly called the police and explained what she had done. So the police show up and the officer cuffs the man to take him in. And he asks the burglar, why did you just stand there? All the lady did was yell a scripture to you. Scripture, replied the burglar. She said she had an axe and two thirty-eights. <laughs> but the, the, see, the word of God... Speaks loudly to you in times of trouble. Mostly because we're more desperate. We're more willing to hear. We're more willing to listen. If you apply God's truth to your trouble, you will get out of it much quicker. So that's okay. We find ourselves in trouble. If it's something that we have done, something that others have done, go to the Lord. Call out to the Lord. He's there for us. He will help you. He will lead and guide you. He will give you the wisdom that we require and that we need. So maybe you're in trouble today in some way. All I can say is hear his voice. Listen for his voice. Look at God's word, which is the truth to us and will guide us and help us. Find the straight road that we need. 
Some of you here, perhaps, are here and became a Christ follower because you ended up in trouble. And guess what? You realized you needed God. So what happens? God will speak to us through trouble. So sometimes as we sang this morning, he will turn that which was meant for evil for good. Evil tries to come into your life and you turn your eyes, your ears upon Jesus. Then he turns it for good. So God will speak to you through trouble. Number three, God speaks to you through gifted teachers. First Thessalonians 2.13, it says, And we will never stop thanking God for this, that when we preach to you, you didn't think of the words we spoke as being just our own, but you accepted what we said as the very word of God, which of course it was, and it changed your lives when you believed it. The word of God preached, taught, spoken to us, declared to us. If we will believe it's the word of the Lord, if we will believe it, that it's God's speaking to us as they had done, it will change your life when you believe. When you believe in the word of God. And sometimes, and this is how God designed it. Yes, we can read the word of God on our own. We can, and we should Daily, always, we should declare it, we should speak it, we should uh, rehearse it into our hearts and minds. We should memorize it, we should, you know, put it on our fridge, put it on our phone, whatever we need to do. Get that word before us day and night that we might observe to do the word and uh, be successful. But sometimes we need someone that God sends. We need a gifted, anointed gift from God to teach us. God sends people into your life to speak truth. He designed it that way, that we were not to be an island unto ourselves, but that we would have the body of Christ. And he gave gifts unto men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. It's a gift of God to the body, to the believers, that there would be truth brought into their life, that there would be help and direction in their life. You need some teachers in your life. You need to hear the truth, how God wants you to hear it. You need to find a church where you hear from God. You're here today, and I believe you're hearing from God. And we're doing that not because of me, but because the Spirit of God prompts us and, rece and we receive his, his word. Because that's what it said there in that scripture. That when we preach to you, you didn't think of the words we spoke as being just our own. But you accepted what we said as the very word of God. You want to be changed in your life? You want to grow in your life? Then God is going to use gifted teachers and ministers to speak his word into your life. It says in Hebrews 10, 25, it says, let us not neglect our church meetings as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back again is drawing near. So the more trouble is on the horizon, the more difficulties that are in the world, that's not when we stay away. That's when we gather in. That's when we come to hear more of the word taught. That's when we come to receive more. And thankfully today with uh, the internet and your smartphones and everything, you can listen to gifted, anointed teachers all the time. But it does not say to you know, let us not neglect our online preaching. It says, let's not neglect our church meetings. So that's the second best. But there's nothing like getting together and being face to face with one another. And I know there's been a lot of things going on to try to stop that. But 
So take the challenge. Come to church. Go to church for six weeks straight. Don't miss a Sunday. See if there's a change. See if something happens. So just think about it. If you went to the gym to work out once a month, once a month, and you would go, I don't see any change. I don't see any difference. Why should I even go? Well, duh, you only went once a month. It's not going to do very much. It needs to be consistent. It needs to be continual. So when you come to church and you come consistently and continually, I believe as you hear the word spoken, as you hear it taught and preached, that it will come into your life. Faith will come and you'll grow and you'll, you'll grow spiritually and your life will begin to have more purpose and meaning and you'll be able to, to see a transformation in your life. People will see a difference in you because you did not neglect coming to church as some people do. So I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're a part of what God's plan is that we would hear from, from him through gifted teachers. Number four, God speaks to you through impressions. What do I mean by that? Well, the definition of impressions is an idea. So God will speak to you through an idea that you, he brings to you, a feeling or opinion about something or someone, especially one formed without conscious thought or on the basis of little evidence. I mean, it's not something that you logically gone through, even though that, you know, God can use that, but you have an impression you have, uh, you know, we call it a feeling, but you know, we're not to be led by our feelings. So in a, in agreement with the word of God, in agreement with the gifted teachers that God brings us in agreement with the help that he gives, he will also help us by speaking to our hearts by speaking to us on the inside, by giving us an impression, by giving us an inward witness, by giving us the right idea, and we will have the right course because even though it wasn't formed with conscious thought or with little, little evidence, we believe that God is impressing us to go this way and for us to do this. It says in John 14, 26, it says, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything. And make you remember all that I have told you. He will send the Holy Spirit. And he has sent him. Know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. His spirit lives and dwells on the inside of you. He is there to help us. And he will teach us everything. So the spirit will bring truth to your mind. He will bring a scripture to your mind. He will bring a song. An idea. He will impress upon you the right road to take. God will impress things on our hearts. See, this is the primary way that God leads us. Sometimes we say, God, I'm, I'm asking you to lead me. I'm asking you to, to give me uh, you know, guidance. Speak to me. And maybe we're listening for a voice to come. Hey, God can do that. Praise God if he does. But the primary way he's going to lead and guide us in the new covenant that we have in Christ, because his spirit is on the inside of us, he will impress upon us. He will lead and guide us. He will lead us with peace in our hearts, in our spirits. And it won't be through a, a conscious, even though, you know, we're consciously thinking of it at that point. So it's kind of like, you know, maybe you're, you know, you're graduated from high school, you're going to go to college and you're good on these college, you know, tours and open houses, whatever they call them. And you go and you're looking at colleges. And they're all great. You think, wow, this one would be good. I really like this one. And so you go through all of them and then the next day or next week, whatever you go, you know, I was going to go to that one, but for some reason, I just feel impressed I just feel like this one is where I need to be. Even though maybe it all doesn't line up logically. 
But that one, that one made an impression on you. As you're being led by the Holy Spirit. As you're asking him to be involved in your decision making. As you're reading the word of God. As you're daily talking to God. As you're praying and as you're seeking his face. He will lead and guide us on the inside. Thank God for the miracles of direction that we see in the Bible and in people's lives. An angel would come and speak. Uh, you know, uh, a vision They'd have a vision and uh, God would speak and uh, uh, they would have a dream and God would speak through the dream. And that happens even today. But the main way he's going to lead us is through the inward witness, the inward voice, the inward leading, because he dwells there within us and he's connected to us spirit to spirit. And he will make an impression on you. He will guide you. So when you're faced with a decision, God will rise up on the inside of you and you will be made aware. Uh, you know, one way is like, Lord, should I go this way? And it's like a, a red light. Nope. Stop. Stop. You just feel like, nope, that's not the right way to stop. And uh, or it could be like a green light. Yes. Go this way. This is the way you, know, you will know the way he will lead and guide you. This is the way. Walk ye in it and go this way. And it'll be like a green light. And you say, I've got the green light on the inside. I've got the, the knowing on the inside. I've got the impression on the inside that God is leading me this way. And it lines up with God's word, his truth. Those that I've surrounded myself with that are, are wise in the ways of the word and that are walking with God and hear God's voice. They're saying that, you know, that it that it's good. And that, so, and it's an impression, impression on the inside of me. So God will rise up, make you go the right way, or he'll make you hesitate and say, well, I need to pray more. I need to, to listen. So heed that inward witness or impression. Now, all of this being said, we always need to test our impression, test our inward leading, test even the words that are spoken to you by that gifted teacher or leader, that Bible teacher, myself, anyone included, you need to test it for yourself. In other words, we just don't take it all. You know, one of my teachers at Bible school would say, be as smart as an old cow. Eat the hay, but spit out the sticks. So everything that's said to you, every leading that you get, maybe it was that pizza. I mean, but so you need to test it. But next week, we'll talk more about making sure you heard God right. But the first step is knowing he does speak and seeking his voice and his truth into our lives. Right? I mean, you can't. Some of the things are pretty clear. You know, thou shalt not steal. There's no exception. You know, thou shalt not steal unless, you know, what, you know, there's, it's just, you know, it's pretty black and white. But then there's other things, you know, should I take this job? Should I move to this house? Should I buy this used car? Should I, uh, you know, call this person? Should I, how should I train my kids? What's the best way to help my kid go the right direction in this circumstance? Because we all know our kids are different, right? What worked on that time didn't probably won't work on the next one. But anyway, that's another series. Um, so you get to know God's voice better when you're in prayer. You're speaking to God. You're listening for his voice. He'll speak to you through his word. He'll speak to you as you worship. He'll impress upon you the right way to go. He'll say, you know what? You need to uh, be at church and listen to that message or whatever. The, he will give us what we need. He's always speaking. He's always wanting to communicate with us. We can live and dwell with him every day. We can hear his voice. He is waiting for you to come to humble yourself and come to talk to him. And it's just that simple. It's coming to talk to him because he is a friend that's closer than a brother. He will always be with us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. So, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus.
We thank you that you are our friend. You're our father. You're our God. You are good. And you want what's best for us. You love us so much that you came and that Jesus bled and died on a cross that we might be forgiven and have a relationship with God. The veil in the temple has been torn. The Holy Spirit and the Shekinah glory of God is available for all of us and dwells in our heart. You will lead and guide us and help us. We can know the right way. We can be guided by the Spirit of God. We will know your voice because you are the good shepherd. And we will hear your voice and we know your voice. Because we are in the truth of the word. Because we're in prayer with you. Because we're worshiping you. and We have a relationship with you. Because we hear the gifted teachers that God sends to us. So Lord, we thank you. You're speaking to us. We can hear from heaven. We can hear from God. And we'll be blessed. Because we obey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.